But anyway, we'll right. uh, we'll segue. Yeah, let's let's move this to the Blue Coast discussion. This is something we got to make. Sure, it's where you currently are, right? You went from eighteen was your last year at Cavies, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then, how did the transition to Blue Coats happen? Like, how did you end up there, basically? And was were you there in nineteen as well? I was. Yeah. Okay. Nineteen so was my ha- first year. Yeah. Do you know Roger, like Tom Rarick? How did that whole thing happen? You know, it's funny. Uh, I didn't know Roger, and I didn't know any of the drum staff, the teaching staff. <laughs> um, and I remember, I think it was Joe Woody. I don't know if you know Joe. Oh Joe, yeah, uh, Joe. Joe. We marched Joe with Woody. him. Yeah, so Joe, I, I think it was Joe, and like we were in our first camp, and Joe, I just, and he wasn't trying to be rude. He just looked at me, he's like, "Hey, man, like, how did you get hired here? I'm like, what?" <laughs> I can totally see that. Me I can too. see his face. That's that's a Joe Woody question. And I said it wasn't. And I, I think out of all the people on that staff, I'm probably closest with Joe. We always need to be on the road together. Um, but the the story is this: I, I knew I wanted to change it from Cavaliers. You know, I just wanted an adjustment. We don't have to go into that, but I wanted to make a change. Um, and I, I knew I was going to leave that drum corps. And I texted Matt Jordan, uh, who does electronics at Bluecoats. And I think at the time I was doing the ensemble coordinating or was an ensemble director or what Ryan Kilgore does. I can't remember the official title, but mm-hmm. they pretty much, which is really unique to Bluecoats, and I think it's brilliant. They are just responsible for running rehearsal and full ensemble and putting the whole thing together. Uh, but Matt was in that role, and I think he was sliding into the electronics role because Vince Oliver was leaving Blue Coats, I think, after 2018 as well. So anyway, I texted Matt. I think it was like Monday of finals. And maybe, honestly, now that I think about it, it probably happened at Basie's too. Uh, <laughs> Everything happens had, at Basie's. It's coming back to me now. Yeah, I remember talking to Lindsey Kuzmerzak, uh, who's the guard captain of the Blue Coats, and I taught with Kuz at, at Southwind in 07, at Phantom in 11 and 12, and I was like, God, you know, I think I'm looking for a change. Uh, she's like, teach here. You know, and I think she maybe even yelled at Matt Jordan or text Matt, like, we're, we're going to get you here. You're going to come teach here. So I think I texted Matt on Monday, like, hey, man, I don't know what roles are available. If you need any help, you know, what our options are. But I, you're a good friend of mine because I taught with Matt at Spirit 08. He was the fun ensemble tech. Uh, and I knew Matt through Mystique in just the middle Tennessee area. And I was like, I don't know what you're in- if you're interested, but I, I'd love to teach if you got something. And I know Tom, Tom Merrick, honestly, through fantasy football. <laughs> uh, he's been he's been in our league. We've got this league with, like, Sean Mack, uh, Josh yeah. Nelson. Uh, it's a bunch of old drum court dudes. Mark Hunter, like I said, who's it? Uh, Sean Womack. Uh, just a bunch of old drum court friends around this league. And Tom joined the league maybe five years ago. Uh, fantastic at fantasy football. He usually has a pretty good team. I think this year's a little rough. We're, both of our teams are terrible. Um, but anyway, so I knew Tom and I think I texted Matt and said I was interested. And then Tom texted me about five minutes, five minutes later saying, dude, I don't, I don't know what it means. I got to talk to Roger, but would love to have you involved in some capacity. Um, I think Ryan Anderson was the battery coordinator. Um, oh man, his name's escaping me all of a sudden. Uh, center at Rhythm X was at Blue Coats before Tom me. Tom Gasparini. Tom Gasparini, I'm sorry, I knew the name. It was the tip T-Gas. of my tongue. We marched with him, too. He, yeah, Tom was, I think, was was leaving the activity. I think he was going back to school when I was told. I never met Tom, really. Uh, maybe just, like, through him hanging out or coming, out, coming to say hello in 19 or 21. Um, but he was leaving, and they did, they had a hole open up. And I think Roger gave me a call, and I talked to Roger. I'm, I'm, I'm down for whatever. I mean, at this point in my life, you know, I'm not looking to be the guy that's that's running everything, you know, maybe that'll happen again at some point, but I've, I've got a wife, I've got a four and a half year old daughter. Uh, and I just love the activity. So when I talked to, or to Roger, I just said, Hey man, I'll, I'll teach the snares. I'll teach bottom bass drum. Like, I don't, I don't care. I just, I just want to get my fix. I want to go teach some drum core, come out, be fun, uncle, you know, teach for a couple weeks and then come home. And it kind of worked out that they had a position. And so it started there at 19 and then obviously 20, was the COVID year and then did two weeks of tour in 21. And I, I'll probably do about the same this year, I would guess, you know, two to three weeks and go in to fill the spot and run around and teach the drums. So cool. nice. Cool. Really quick, funny Ryan Anderson story. Um, when he was teaching at crown, um, they were rehearsing near my house in Kentucky and my parents were out of town and my parents were totally cool with this. They know about it, but I was staying there like, <laughs> 
at home alone and it was a pretty decent sized house we had like a pool and all this stuff and so i like texted lee and like all those dudes that were on uh on tour at the time i was like hey you guys are staying here overnight blah 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 what's the schedule do you want me to come do you guys want to get away and like lee bettis and like ryan anderson and a bunch of the staff like i went and picked them up and they all came back to my parents house and ryan left like a bunch of really valuable stuff in my house <laughs> that i had to like mail back to him right so. dude i i didn't know like i said i went to that drum staff man i, I remember flying in for the first camp, and I knew I didn't know anybody, man. Like I said, I, I knew Tom and I knew Matt Jordan, <laughs> uh, and it was it was a little intimidating, you know what I mean. But those guys are up. Ryan was super welcoming. Joe Woody, same thing. Like uh, Ryan's just pure energy when he teaches. Yeah, you know, and just a fantastic teacher. Joe Woody, same thing. Suvin, Roger, all those guys, man. Um, and I was excited, kind of similar to the Cavaliers. Whenever I went from Brett to Jim. You know, for me, that was always exciting. And it was kind of like, I don't teach the system that Roger teaches. You know, this is foreign to me. Um, but the more tools I have in my toolbox, I think the better teacher I become. So I, I kind of jumped on that and said, you know, this is a different system than what, what I did at Cavaliers. But I'm going to go in and just try and be a sponge and just check it all out and see what it is. And, you know, there might be some, some, some things I love and bring back to Vandergrift. There might be some things I don't love and don't bring back. But the more I expose myself to different things and take myself out of my comfort zone, I think the better teacher I become. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a blast, man. And I, I think Tom's writing, you know, I'll just go on. I just, I think it's, I think it's a 10. Yeah, it's, dude, it's, my, it's, it's, it's fun to play. Yeah. It's fun to listen to. Uh, I'm a, we're big Rarick fans on this podcast. Yeah. I just think it's different. I think it's fresh. I think the rhythms he chooses, I think the way he coordinates the front ensemble stuff, the battery stuff, I just think it's unique. Yep, uh, and it, and it's just fun to teach, and and Tom is the most I, I don't know, just a great human being. I, oh yeah, it, it just it's just so great working. I remember that in nineteen, I just feel like, uh, I think Roger jumped off the road for a couple of days, and it was me and Ryan Kilgore, uh, maybe Brad Palmer in the box, wrote a percussion ensemble, and just how flexible the staff was, and it's like can we change this bass voicing because the form was too spread, and I was like, well, I need to call. I need to call Tom before I do anything. And Ryan's like, just change it, man. And then I, I did, and I felt so weird. Like, and I called Tom. <laughs> I was like, Tom, is that okay? And Tom's like, dude, 100% trust. Do what you need. And it was just such a great it's, it's a great environment. And I think that drum corps, I know I'm biased. I just feel like it's a very special place right now. And I think it, the design team that are in place and the staff that are in place, I just think it's really special right now. And I think it reminds me of those early 2000s Cavaliers, honestly. Like there's just some really brilliant, kind people in the right places, and I just it's just it's just an honor to be a part of. So also shout out Mike Scott who marched with us. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mike's and Mike Scott's a huge part of that man. You know, <laughs> super organized, gets it done. Like I said, it's it's a really great place to be, man, and um, really happy to be there. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna second the uh, you wanted to go there to get a new experience because they they definitely have a unique combination of people across the entire well organization but also just more specifically like the percussion segment of it like people from all different kinds of groups backgrounds like it's like a i don't know it's just there's no way to really put into words it's just a very unique setup and the way they approach it i think is different from the way uh, just from talking to different people on here and just observing myself and whatever it's very unique and different and it obviously works it's cool you always know you're going to see something cool. Whenever you walk up to them in the lot, you're going to see something unique on the field. Like they've just been doing a killer job. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm biased because I marched there, but I'll be the first to say, like, I'll still criticize when criticism is, is warranted, but it's just cool to see what they've been doing and innovating over the past, like, five, six, seven, eight years. Yeah, and it's a perfect marriage, you know, and I think going into that, you know, you got two entities of Roger and Tom and Roger's warm up routine and kind of what he's created with that, you know? Yep. And, and at first from the outside, I was like, what's, what is that? I want to kind of learn more about it. And I think, and I'm speaking for myself, my observation, it reminds me of kind of what Murray Gussick did in those early two thousands Vanguard lines, mm -hmm. like Oh two, Oh three, Oh four. We're like talking to those guys that marched like Oh four Vanguard or three Vanguard, which is some of my favorite lines. They'll talk about like, once we got to the warm-up book, the show was easy because there was so many challenges inside, like all oh, the flambeau cab with Flamis 
you know, with cheesy poofs, with those long roll exercises. So the book felt easy in their hands. And, and you told us earlier, like the golden age of drum core or drum lines. And like, I think the vocabulary has changed so much in my mind. There's no way you could recreate what Murray did, but I think Roger's done that to an extent yeah. by making this crazy hard warm up packet. And I feel like the members get through that warm up routine with Ram 95, with uh, <laughs> some of that stuff is nuts. Yeah, I don't know what they call it, but the whole Susie, you, new Susie, chicka 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 and the book feels very approachable to them. And I think that's kind of what's been created by both Roger and Tom and that marriage has been great. And I think we've had, you know, we saw some success. The guys I thought were fantastic this past year, you know, in a shortened season. And I thought 19, yeah. I thought they played really well. I was super happy with them. So, yeah. It's yeah, I'm been... a little bummed that we didn't get to experience that 2020 all vet snare line. Dude. Oh, man. That was, <laughs> that was the it first was... thing Evan and I texted each other when the season got called off. I was like, dude, they had an all vet snare line. <laughs> I wanted, like I wanted it. The Instagram photos, and they all have like, I'm like, oh shit. This, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> it was, dude, I, yeah, I remember we were talking about the, like, text the members, like, bring your jerseys, like, <laughs> to camp. But we got to get a picture of this. And it yeah. was just, and there were reps. Like, I remember, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the place we do camps at. It's a small Ohio school. I'm sure it's probably the same school you guys did. It's, at, um, I mean, like, oh, what's it called? I can see it. I can see the building in my head right now. I uh, it's old. Like, yes, they've old, been there like, forever. Down the classroom. They yes, have been there like, forever. Oh, and we did a rep. Of sh- we did a rep of show music, and I remember there was it was like a it's like a five foot roll into a triple foot roll, at like one ninety two or something burning, and like it popped on like Saturday night at camp. Nice. And I remember I remember, I remember Roger like let out an audible like, Whew. you know, like, <laughs> and it was just we were just we were just cranking it. We were working. It's like it was gonna be silly. And there's yeah. just so much talent, and I, I think people ask me, like, how do you build a DCI line? I think the first thing is retention. If you yeah. can get members to come back year after year, that's like – Cavaliers, I mean, in 2015, we were a tenth in drums. We were, it was a rough year for that drum corps. Um, and then somehow – and I'll never forget this. I'm, I'm going to go on a, on a tangent on this, but uh, I remember the, the center snare and the center quad – came and found me and Eric Reidenauer, who was the co-caption in 2015. Uh, Froman, uh, Talk Cavaliers Forever. Uh, and they were like, what are we doing next year? We got to figure out, we got to get guys back. How we, how we make it next year better. And we had a core group of guys that came back from 15 to 16 to 17. And we saw that drum line jump from 10. I think we were fourth. Fourth in finals, I think, in 16. And then third in finals in 17. It's retention. And the fact that with Blue Coats, it was the same thing. We had this core group of guys that were coming back from 19, which was a great year, into 20. And it was just like, it just, it just didn't happen. Uh, but 21, man, I, those guys were fantastic. I can't, I can't talk enough good things about them, what they did, the work ethic. Zach Wilson's a, a, an all-star. He, I mean, that, that, kid that kid's crazy. has some yeah. of the best snare drum hands I've ever seen in my life. Like, Ma- Emmanuel De Leon's up there, a couple other people, like, that kid's like probably one of the best of this whole generation of drum corps. Remember, it's just insane to watch him play. And, and what gets me about him, and I'll brag on that guy for a second, like, yes, I 100% agree. And then maybe the most humble and teachable student I've ever come across. Nice. You know, and that kid has, has the full right to be a prick. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, and I should say that word. So but like, he, because uh. he, he's so good, but like when you give him feedback, it's like, oh. I'll work on that. Like just so humble and it's just so that combination of things is so rare. Well, and I, that, did, I, I think that's why he is what he is. That right there is like the sound bite of the podcast. <laughs> that dude has every right to be a prick and he just <laughs> isn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I want to po- touch on one thing and then we'll close this out. We just passed the hour mark about five minutes ago, but who cares? We're having fun. Um, you were talking about how like Rogers warm up packet is so difficult, kind of recreating what Murray Gussick did um, at that time, and it's so that's what I it, it illustrates something about this activity that I love about it, and I think I know Evan has said this too at some point. 
there's more than one way to skin the cat. Like, I know extremely successful groups that have taken that way more complicated warm up packet. So by the time your book, your hands get to the book, they're just they feel amazing. Everything you play feels like butter, and it feels easy. But I've also seen groups extremely excel taking the approach of like, all right, we're gonna have super basic fundamental exercises that give us a solid foundation and get our hands to feel nice and go right into the book. I mean, Rennick basically is that approach. And what's mm-hmm. he four years in a row now? And then you've also got blue coats, which have been extremely successful taking the exact opposite approach. And it's like, it's, I just love that there's more than one way to do it. There's no real right answer. It's whatever system you put in place, whatever you want to build as a creative and an, as an educator, just, it can work. If you just be consistent, be open-minded, like adapt. It's just so cool to me. No, and I agree. And, and just to preface it too, like I, my my observation with the Murray to Roger, I don't. Rogers never said that to me. Yeah, you know, I don't know if that's what he was trying to do, or but that that's my impression of it. Um, no, but yeah. I agree. Like, and with the high school stuff, you know, like 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 if I were to teach a group right now, I probably wouldn't do the elongated exercise stuff. You know, just because I'm more of a, a concise, like small chunks, you know, kind of guy. This is what what makes sense in my brain. It's how I was brought up. Um, but and, I th- and I'll be honest, I think some groups do that elongated stuff in drum corps that maybe aren't ready for it as well. I don't yeah. know if I can say that and not be, not to be controversial or no calling it goose, but Feel like free. some people some people need those fundamentals. But blue coats, we're we're in this fortunate situation where we have an insane amount of talent, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I'll, I'll say this, and maybe I shouldn't say this as well. And I'm, I'm drinking bourbon while I'm doing this. It's good for my throat. I got a cold, so <laughs> right, um, right, the hot toddy. Uh, uh, yeah, but but I. You know, I the talent we had in nineteen, I remember being in that room and just, just coming from Cavaliers, you know, there were twenty snare drummers in that, that blue coats room that I would have taken the Cavaliers in an instant. You know, the the depth that Blue Coats are getting, and I think that is another testament to Roger and what Roger does in his system mm-hmm. and teaching a broken city. And students students watch that warm up lot from Blue Coats and they want to do it. They want to be a part of it. And it draws a certain type of student. And, you know, we just did a pacing clinic um, this, this past weekend with Blue Coats. Saw that. You know, and, and talking to some of the other teachers there, like uh, Subin Varghese, who teaches the Blue Coats and teaches the Broken City as well. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, we're looking at the quad and we got some guys from Pulse and Broken City coming out. Like, just the, the, the funneling of students that kind of want to be part of that system. But that's, I think those students are attracted to Roger and that technique and that approach. Same with Paul. You know, Paul's got the troopers you know those kids like like that system you know you got north texas you know you've got people that flock to that like you said it's it's the system whatever works for you you know and if you get hired you know somewhere like do your system you know you don't hire a head coach and not on call his own plays you know yep. and every system is different and it works for every single person so it's, anyway. it's also the, to relate this to our colin episode we did two podcasts ago you talked about how like people want to come as a member, be a part of that blue coats lot because the experience is fun to be in. It's fun to watch. It's just, it just looks like a good time. They're playing cool stuff, playing hard stuff. They're, re- they're doing it very well. Like Colin actually touched on that a little bit, like, cause they did some of those lot tune type things with this mm-hmm. weird 2021 season. And he goes, man, Red's why wasn't remakes, I doing this? Remix. Yeah. He literally said on here with us, he goes, why? I wish I'd been doing this for years. And I wonder if that's going to, I mean, Colin doesn't need any help recruiting with his resume at this point. Like he's going to get talent no matter where he goes just because of his name and his experience. But it'll be interesting to talk to him later. Like, is he seeing upticks in audition turnout? Is he seeing like more excitement? Cause I loved watching them. It's, it was a blast. I mean, it was just cool. Uh, That's a random little tangent, but. (laughs) Well, no, I think it reminds me of a story too. Like you guys know Dave Reeves or know of Dave Reeves. No, I don't think um, so. And another great arranger, wrote for, wrote for Troopers, like around like 08, 09, 2010. Great composer. Him and Jim Casella are very close. Um, but Dave was the caption head at, at Vanguard, I think, in 99, 2000, 01, in that area. In that area. Um, and then Murray kind of came in in 02, 03, 04. And talking to those guys that marched those lines, like Dave was pretty strict. You know, it was all wrist. The exercise book was pretty straightforward. And then Murray kind of came in in 02 and 03 and kind of opened it up. And and what I was told at least was Dave kind of came back and saw it and said, man, I I should have been more relaxed. I should have let the talent come out more. 
like the yeah. talent of the individual player come out more. And I think that's that's what Murray did, and I think that's kind of what Rogers trying to do is let the talents of the members be shown. And you don't necessarily see that with eight on a hand, you yeah. know, or dig it up, dig it up, dig it up, whatever, <laughs> you know. Let the students kind of the talents be shown, and I think that's what Rogers did. I think that's what Murray did, and I think there's something to be said about that. So, yeah, I, th- I think too, just like a, a closing statement for myself that emulates my perspective on like modern drumming versus maybe 80s 90s drumming where those groups in the 80s 90s were i'm not gonna put words in anybody's mouth but it looked like they were more concerned about looking a certain way than maybe i won't i don't want to say sounding a certain way but just like optimizing the efficiency of what the kid is how they're drumming because I do think there's a difference in like making sure everyone looks the exact same and making sure that everyone moves the exact same and you can still move the same without like all our heights aren't all nine to three. If we get out our protractor and our ruler on the thing, like what sound are you making? What balance and blend are you making and how are we making it more efficient for these kids to like sound as good as they possibly can? So. No, I hundred percent agree. Like you watching those old Cavaliers where it's like 2000, there's a great video I think Josh Naiman put out. It's like 30 minutes of like 2000 footage, which to me is just a gold mine. I love that drum line. One of my favorite drum lines of all time. And you, they play eights for like 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> and it's like, and it's like a do 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 do. but it, it is immaculate. And the way it looks from player to player is so good and so impressive. And, you know, that, that was the thing. And I'm talking about the look of the things. I mean, I think Paul's groups early on would kind of, criticized for that like not looking the same you know like you look at individual hands but i i'll, I'll say this too and a compliment to paul rennick I, I don't think anybody's more consistent right now in the activity in terms of producing great lines and great looks and i, and I know for him you know i remember talking to scott coder again he came and helped out van a couple of years ago and we were at the dinner and i just kind of said scott like what is paul doing <laughs> like what is <laughs> yeah, playing gallop yeah, like yeah but i mean what is what did you take away? Because Scott was a program coordinator at Cavaliers when they won all those years. And I was like, you've been around great drum lines. You know, when you walk in the room for the first time and watch Paul run a drum line thing or a snare section or whatever, what what did you notice? What did you pick up on? And he was like, Joe, he's like, I watched Paul go down the line with every single player. And they just all sounded exactly the same. Like the touch and like the interpret rhythms, the interpret roles. And he's like, and that's what struck me was it wasn't about the hand setup. It wasn't about what their hands look like. They just sounded the same and they all bought into the sound. And that was it. And I was like, it was kind of a mind blowing moment for me. Like it is it, like you just said a second ago, it's just about the sound. And I think Paul is again, I have so much respect for all the teachers in DCI, but I just, for him watching those groups every year, it's just like, how are you doing it? And it sounds like it's, it's just about playing the same way and creating the same sounds. Yep. I would say that's, so. that's all that really matters. Like if a judge is in the box, he's not going to, or if like the drum judges, they, they can't go past the <laughs> front sideline now. So it's like, they're not going to be close enough to give a crap. If some snare drummers left hands look a little different, it doesn't no, really just, matter. And they're just trying not to get nailed by a rifle. You know, or, <laughs> yep. I mean, they're not going to catch it. They just want to hear music and, you know, and that's the thing. And the blue coats are trying to do the same thing. And I think Tom, writes a great book and hopefully in 2022 we'll play some great music play it really really well and create some good sounds so yeah i know i'm excited for it but uh i think that's a good way to a good place to end it uh evan you got anything left i'm good man all right well we'll close this out make sure you hit subscribe on youtube drop us drop a comment let us know what you think respond to it anything we talked about uh it all helps us share the videos uh check the check us out on podcast services um social media patreon lonestarpercussion.com discount code aged out save ten dollars then a neighbor fifty dollars or more everybody wins uh be look be on the lookout for a couple announcements of some new kind of content that evan and i have been talking about doing like some practice tool things we'll release a video here soon explaining that um and then we're looking at some merch so be on the lookout for an instagram post go follow follow us over there uh, looking into t-shirts and uh, stickers for your drum pads, phone cases. Uh, yeah, so we'll see everybody next time. Peace.